how do we use modern technology to better understand the human mind and body in a way that allows us to flourish and live deeper versions of our own lives. If you're not deliberate about who you want to be, someone else is going to decide that for you. First part of my life was in what I call national security loosely. So think military, government. So I worked in Washington, D.C. in that environment, and then I went into the military and I served for seven years in special operations. I was really passionate about this notion of the next ridgeline of human performance. And I think most of us go through life without really understanding the true capacity of our own potential. It's the ultimate aspirational thought. How do we stay on a, a journey that's gonna allow us to reach the best version of ourselves? 87% of employers said that stress and burnout are issues for their workforce. And so what we know from a, both from neuroscience, from biology and physiology, is that when someone is in a state of chronic stress, which means they are overwhelmed, they have angst or anxiety about the future, about decisions, about things around them, there is a deep health implication for that. In today's world, people can be more connected than ever and live in highly dense environments like New York City and LA and yet feel deeply dangerously alone. A new study from Cigna says most Americans feel lonely and the group most at risk is one of the youngest. Whether that's because we feel like we have more to do and less time to do it, we feel more of a sense of burden or we're comparing ourselves more to other people in the world because we have things like social media. And a leader in today's world has to have an individual set of tools to manage their own attention and physiology. So I'm giving a talk called Managing Fear and Anxiety, the superpower of the 21st century. It comes down to this very basic question of who am I, which is rooted in our values, which is rooted in our daily practices and rituals, whether that's breathing, focus, very simple, almost trite, but it's a profound question, who am I? So in all of that, there's this underlying sense of growing anxiety. The idea of this talk is how do we think about building a cognitive immune system in order to prevent ourselves from being overwhelmed by these technologies and to stay grounded and rooted in the present. Because if we don't have these practices in a metric for ourselves, the external world is gonna be louder and it's gonna tell us how to act, how to sleep, who to be in the world. We can get data on ourselves now with clinical grade devices and start to understand our sleeping patterns, our own stress levels. It's fascinating when you start to give people tools around, as an example, how do you become more aware of your own sleeping patterns and how do you improve your sleep? I promise you the single biggest difference I have seen in people who are extraordinary performers is people who understand the power of sleep as a long-term health implication, but as a day-to-day, -day, it is unequivocally the single most important performance enhancing drug available to us. And so when we think about technology enabling human flourishing, that's things like creativity, human connectedness, human expression, the democratization of knowledge. And all of that is rooted ultimately in a human narrative. It's not a technological narrative. It's extraordinary you're learning about quantum computing, but at the end of the day, if you cannot control your own attention and be present as a leader, you will be overwhelmed by these things and they will have an implication in the long term on your mental, on your physical health, and ultimately on your capacity to be who you want to be in the world. Hi, if you're an emerging leader ready to take on the future, then I invite you to go to singularity.org to learn more about the executive program and apply for the next cohort. Visit the link below. We look forward to seeing you there.